Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again making something from Rick and Morty, the newest season recently released, and I thought it would be fun to revisit one of my favorite cartoons. My friend Jose Madera, AKA PR Props, recently released these masks. They are Glorzos. Um, in one of the episodes of Rick and Morty, they go to this planet and these things attach to their faces, basically taking over their body like puppets. And eventually Rick and Morty are able to kill theirs. And so that the other people don't get suspicious, they just duct tape it to their head. Um, my head is ginormous and I can't fit it onto my head. Um, yeah, big head problems. So. I'm gonna make some modifications to it. I believe Jose actually cut one of these tentacles off and then slides it on and clips this back on. Uh, even if I did that, it still wouldn't fit on my ginormous head. So I am going to make the modification to where this is a killed Glorzo that is strapped on. In that episode when they show that, the Glorzo's tentacles are folded to the front of them and it's just duct tape to their head. So. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut these arms, tentacles, whatever they are, off, and then sculpt them to go facing down using some epoxy. Yeah. So today we are going to modify a Jose Madera masterpiece and hopefully not screw it up. Glory to Glorzo. Let's get to building. I want to start off this build by just saying how I am always amazed with PR Props sculpts. He's an amazing artist with a wide range of castings in his repertoire. I actually have several of his castings that I need to do videos for. Please, please, please go over to his website, check out his stuff, and support a creative artist by purchasing some of his castings. Everything is reasonably priced and impeccably crafted. I have a ginormous head, so I need to modify this to fit my face. I cut off the arm arms with a cutting wheel. Please make sure to wear a respirator and a face shield if you're going to use a cutting wheel on resin. You don't want to breathe in the dust and those wheels can explode when they get too hot. Protect yourself. Also make sure that you have a firm grip on the casting or clamp it. Most of the large scars on my hands are from cutting wheels running over the top of it. With the tentacles cut off, I need to reposition them facing downward. After thinking for a few minutes, I decided to temporarily glue them on with some chunks of foil to act as a base. Then I could push some epoxy or clay over the top of it. And I am sure that there will be some of you who want to point out in the comments down below what it looks like. I'm well aware it's Rick and Marty. Most of the aliens and random objects found in that world are a bit inappropriate, unnecessary, and resemble other body parts.
I decided to use Freeform Air by Smoothon, not a sponsor. It's much lighter than epoxy sculpt clay or other resins. It's light enough that it can actually float on water when hardened, no joke. Being something that will hang on my face, I didn't want to add a bunch of extra weight to this mask. It is an equal parts A and B mixed together. Once it is combined, it can be molded and sculpted. Freeform sticks really well to everything, so it can be a little tricky to use. I found that a little bit of water or mold release or isopropyl alcohol can help to prevent it from sticking to you or your tools as you work. Another good idea is to push it on your surface and let it sit for an hour or so and come back to do the refining. As it starts to set up, it's a little easier to manipulate. After 24 hours, it's hard as a rock. After I let it set for about 8 hours, I pulled the foil out and reinforced the backside of the mask. That way there's a good connection to the outside and the inside. I let it sit up overnight and now I'm ready to smooth over the outside surfaces and a little bit of the inside. Once again, make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding the stuff you don't want to breathe in the tons of dust it kicks up. I refine it with a rotary tool then switch over to a finer grit sandpaper to do some hand sanding. It'll also help to even out my passes I did with the tooling and make my sculpture and Jose's transition smoothly. I also save some of the dust, add a little bit of super glue to it, and this acts as a great hole filler for those areas that may have little bubbles or other random things. After a good sanding over the entire sculpt, I hit it with a gray automotive primer. The automotive primer fills in some of my leftover imperfections and gives me a unified surface for painting. Initially I had planned to spray paint it outside with some of the base colors, but in typical Texas weather it uh, dropped well below 40 degrees this week and I didn't want to give my spray paint cans a heating bath to get them to flow properly. I just decided to hand paint it with uh, acrylics instead. I made an initial two coats of the base colors for all the parts, then mixed in lighter and darker tones of those colors to make my paint job less unified in colors and splotchier like skin would be.
Since my Glorzo is dead, I needed to have some discharge from his mouth and in the tube sticking out on the sides. I wanted these drips to look wet forever, so I mixed some five minute epoxy with some paint to then drip in those areas. The mouth got a bright blue and the side tubes got a golden one. I wasn't quite sure if the blue hanging out of the mouth was a tongue or if it was a discharge, so I went with a discharge. For my strapping on this build, I decided to use some nylon web strap that I think came with a blanket I bought a while back. In the episode, I'm pretty sure they just taped theirs to their head, so instead of having a flimsy tape holding up this relatively heavy mask, I decided to give it a little more support and less hair ripping off anytime I want to wear it. I didn't think the duct tape would hold to the strapping very well, so I put down some super glue to help it. Once I covered the whole thing with duct tape, I quickly hit it with a blowtorch to shrink the tape down to the strap, and then I tucked it under the tentacles. Eventually, I made some pieces to go over the top of them to make it closer to what the tape job looks like in the episode. And with that, my PR Props modded Glorzo mask is complete. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I love how this thing turned out. Jose Madera, AKA PR Props, is an amazing sculptor. I'll put links to his stuff down below. If you will, please go like, share, subscribe, follow all the things on all his socials. If you can buy some of his stuff, you will not be disappointed. He makes absolutely amazing casts. I have made a number of his things and made modifications to them over the past couple of years. He is an awesome maker. He's a super generous guy and everything that he does is like spot on. So yeah. Maybe you will make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from your favorite cartoon, modify it a little bit so that it fits your big old fat head and then you, um, wear it around all over the place. Gotta, gotta fool them somehow. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Uh, I gotta go, you know, through enemy territory, so gotta slide this on. Peace out.
If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.